hammers in here, baby. Yeah! Woo -hoo. Fish and freaks, hello, great to see you. Well, I can't really see you, but you know what I'm talking about. We're still in quarantine mode. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it wild? This is a strange time. This is the oddest time I've ever lived through. I am by myself today. I've been doing a lot of building back home at the treehouse, working on getting uh, the hens and the duck and everybody safe and comfortable and everything. And yes, I am wearing a shirt that is just Flair's face right now. I've been thinking about like setting up just a cardboard cutout of Flair like holding an animal up, like holding a bobcat or a fox or something. So that, that way, it's like the ultimate scarecrow. All the animals will stay away from my chickens and my duck. But if you also want to get your hands on Flair's face and some of our awesome new merch right now at Guggen Squad, we got a lot of new things, including this hat too. Just busted this one out. This looks like it's going to be the perfect summer hat. And also get yourself a face mask, you know? But the reason I'm standing here right now at one of the lakes here at the Battle Springs Ranch, the owner was letting me know the other day that there was some crappie that they they had visual on up shallow. So that means to me they were spawning, they had some flooding, they had some washouts, and like they could see uh, crappie swimming around. And it is that time of year that the crappie should be spawning, bass are spawning as well. And I planted brush piles out here. If you all remember, if you watch some of the, the last videos that I did out here, there's about six or seven brush piles but right now the fish should be around the reeds and they should be spawning. Using some of our jigging poles uh, and using some casting techniques, just seeing if we can catch a slab. My goal in the crappie scene is to catch a three pound crappie. I can see them on the electronics. So I'm looking for like potholes and things like that. Looks like there's some structure out there to my left, but oh, and we're marking fish. Goodness me, I don't really know. I, this, this lake's kind of a mystery to me. I caught crappie out here one time and uh, planted brush piles when it was colder, and now the fish should re be really biting. I've never devoted much time to figuring them out, but I am today. I'm gonna figure these crappie out today, and I know some of them are big, but look at, the, just hold the phone. Just take you a gander right there. Look at that. What on earth? That's a school of something. Fish on. First fish, first uh, first little stop and cast. What is this? Oh, it's a crappie and he has got it deep. Oh my, we found the schools y'all. We found the schools. That's actually on a mini recon. Okay, so maybe they're not in the reeds. There is a nice keeper crappie. That's a white crappie. Okay, we're gonna keep this guy. I'm not gonna keep very many out of here. This isn't a big lake but we're just gonna manage a few. Kind of close to a, where I planted uh, one of the deep brush piles. It's got a ditch around it, but that's a pretty aggressive crappie hitting a, hitting a crankbait like that. Okay, I'm gonna switch my rigs up since this is my eight foot jigging pole and it's got braid and it's already rigged up with a fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna take this crankbait off. I was using this to long cast for white bass the other day. This is kind of an essential bait for me. I put it in the uh, my Guggen Squad uh, essential baits box. And because I just, I don't know, I catch fish on that just about everywhere I go. It's a good like go-to if you're not sure what's going on. But I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take one of these little bobbers that I can just attach to my line. And then I'm gonna put a jig head on there. Basically something like this. Just your standard uh, little crappie jig. I think that's eh, maybe a 132nd. And then I'm gonna take another rod and I'm gonna rig up something like this. But what I'm hoping for is that these waves are gonna act as natural action for me. They're gonna keep the jig head moving. So I'm just gonna like fan cast it out and watch it. There's the brush pile that I planted. And there is the fish just in front of it. Let's try the old crappie 
jig on a cork here. Oh, got it, got it. Took it, took it under. Oh, that was sweet. Thumped it good. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that, baby. Oh yeah. Nice crappie. There we go, fishing freaks. Crappie number two on a different method. It's a nice one. He just slapped it under. That was so cool to be able to see on the, the mega imaging, the crappie off from that brush pile. And then I got bit on the jerk bait. And then that one just sucked it under, just for curiosity. Let's just check it out. It's probably gonna be an 11 incher. That is a 12 inch crappie, really nice. They have to be 10 inches to keep. So far y'all, my fish have come from seeing them on the electronics. So I thought I was gonna, I had two more bites right there on that brush pile. I thought it was gonna be lights out. There was like a dozen fish on it at least. But I'm gonna idle around because I really didn't get to look very much and just see what the deal is. Are the fish gonna be in the more shallow areas? I can actually see beds on the graph, so that's a good thing. Or are they gonna be in these like random weird ditches that are kinda out in the middle? That was very strange. And the biggest obvious piece of cover is the reeds that surround the lake. So I also need to look at that. I am interested in all the divots, all the beds that I'm seeing off the bank. This is very, I don't know, this, this seems strange. So if I could find like an offshore spot that has a harder bottom, that could be the key of what is holding these fish away from the reeds. See them that well, but these are all beds, look like old beds, and there's little groups of fish. You can see those don't look as big as the marks I was seeing, but like there's a rock, there's some more rock, there's some some big pieces of uh, structure in here. It might hold these fish, but mainly what I'm looking at is the abundance of these holes. Okay, folks, I see a bass that is guarding fry. There's not many bass in here. But I see one. So if we have a bass that's guarding fry, that means the crappie may have spawned quite a long time ago. Now this is a small lake, so it can heat up and cool down really quick. They shouldn't all be spawned, but it's definitely a sign that, that we're farther along. <coughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw into this little pod of fry. And if you don't know what fry look like, they look like, um, like if you sprinkled cinnamon on top of the water, um, there'll be thousands of them. They'll be about in a group about the size of a softball to a basketball. And you can throw like a weightless bait or uh, top water in there and you just let it sink through them and you get them. <laughs> now this is a male bass right here that has already spawned and has just guarding those fry. This is what I love about this time of year is you can really get both species or many species uh, in there together. And I'm gonna return this bass. It's gonna guard those fry and prevent the crappie from eating it. That's what happens is the crappie spawn first and then the bass spawn later. And what a lot of times ends up happening is the crappie eat the bass fry. And that's why this lake right here has kind of been taken over by the crappie. So if you're gonna try to manage a big bass pond, like there's another one out here you guys have seen a lot of videos from, a lot of great bass, but there's no crappie in there. So you usually end up with small bass in a, in a lake that's got a lot of crappie in it. So let's let this fish go. Ooh. I don't wanna speak too soon, but I think I might have just found the crappie. Here we go. Here we go. I found a bedding area. I just hope it's a crappie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Big in, baby, oh yeah. Man, I just threw out there with a minnow and didn't get anything. I threw a little rooster tail out there and got him. So that's th three crappie, three different lures. So there is a bedding area identified on my electronics. It looks like a hard bottom, like everywhere in here is sand. And then you hit this, this hard bottom right here. It's three foot, it's off the bank. And it just looked like craters all over it. And I could see some fish in there. 
and I was wondering, I wonder if they're bass or not, but it appears that at least some of them are crappie. So some of them could still be on beds. Oh, just got another bite right there. Oh, oh gosh, I had him on. He was swimming towards the boat. God, crappie are so tricky with their bites. Very soft. Oh, there's another bite. Oh, got him, got him that time. Okay. Felt like a couple of bites. Oh yeah. Good crappie, baby. Oh, that's a giant. That's a giant. Oh, it's so big, looks like a bass. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Inhaled it too. Ah, you're so big, I gotta lip you. Yeah, baby. Oh, he's not that big, but <laughs> I got pretty excited. That thing is inhaled. Okay, so this is definitely a bedding area here that we have found. Get that dude unhooked. So that is four fish. I think I'm only gonna keep five out of here. So I need one more, but that is a solid fish right there. Okay, I'm gonna stay with the rooster. See if they, oh no. Oh my gosh. I just threw my rooster tail like a hundred yards. The line broke. Oh, dadgummit, that sucks. I don't know if I've got another one in the boat. The rest might be in my truck, Dad. God. I wonder if my line just got super twisted. I don't know what happened there, but I'm gonna cut a big chunk off. It's six pound line. I'm gonna go with a little road runner and a little sickle tail swim bait. This little LFT baby shad. It's like a micro grub style tail. Okay, let's see if we can get bit on this little Roadrunner swimmer. Oh, there's a bite. Got, got him. Got him on the Roadrunner. There we go. They like it just moving. <laughs> Another solid crappie, man. Just hammers. Hammers in here, baby. Yeah. Hoo -hoo. Absolutely gulp, too. That's some crappie goodness right there. God, you smell good. I got my five crappie in the box. So that is all I'm gonna take out of this lake. I'm gonna fish a little bit more though and see if I can get that big one, that big one I'm going for, three pounder. We're getting fired up. It's you, no corona here, no, no. That's about, it's you, and some of that oak pollen. Man, that wind is blowing. Important thing to note is that they're not always spawning on the bank. Now I thought they totally would have, but I just paid attention to my electronics and I was able to find them away from the bank. And what I love about crappie fishing versus bass fishing <laughs> is when you find one, you're normally going to find a mess. There's a good fish right there. Ooh, baby. God, son. Son, that's an even bigger one than the last one. Oh my gosh. These slab units right here, just beautiful fish. That's awesome. That's Instagram worthy. That's fish brain pick worthy. Get a pick, get a sniff, and get back out there. Oh gosh, hammered. Oh, that might be the one. Oh, just bing bonged it. Oh, no, you're not. You're just another slob unit. Oh my goodness. That big thump I felt was it just smacking the back of its throat. Y'all look down there. Look out there, look out down there. It's deep. It's not even a big one, but look. Look at this. Sorry, the sun is terrible, y'all. That tail is bloody. There's a bloody tail right there. So just like a bass, when crappies spawn, they're gonna get those bloody tails. So another thing to pay attention to, I already knew what they were doing just from seeing the those they look like craters it's also interesting to me that you know, i'm essentially bed fishing but they like this moving bait whereas a bass would, would not really hit that they would they would just see that they wouldn't feel the need to defend their nest it's moving so quick and these these are very aggressive there's another bite Woo! hitting it hitting it got him he floated me came in came in hot 
Oh yeah, sucker. Oh yeah, sucker. You look good. <laughs> oh, y'all, crappie are fun. Any of you bass guys that are just looking for a new challenge, crappie fishing is it. They're, I'm telling you, they're tricky. They're, I've fished around these things my whole bass fishing life. And it's just in the last few years I've discovered how, you know, they're in the same areas, but they're hidden. They're like little hidden gems of awesomeness, and they're so tasty. Very awesome, very awesome. It's really good to see this lake um, healthy with crappie. And just all of these are, are good keeper crappie. And we planted structure in here in the, in the winter. And I think post-spawn, when these fish are done, you know, in like May, it'll they'll move all to these brush piles that we've planted out here because the reeds just don't seem to hold them like I thought they would. Okay, can we get just one more nice slabola and then we'll call it a day? Man. Oh gosh, there's a spot right there. They just hammer down on it. You don't feel very big. Or are you just coming right at me? Hey, yeah. You're a keeper, but you're not huge. Oh, there you go. All right, y'all. Another nice fish. That is awesome right there. Okay. I am going to take it in. I don't think today is the day I'm going to catch my, my three-pound crappie, but I am ecstatic that I've figured out where a lot of these fish are setting up out here and can come back and be able to get on them again. And I'm excited to go fish some other crappie places. That was just, this is a telltale sign right here of what's going on everywhere else. Finished product of the day. There's a good stringer crappie right there, y'all. Flair, what do you think? Catch and cook, brother? I think so, man. Flair does not talk like that, but I can almost guarantee you he would be saying, you better get those in some grease. Oh yeah, y'all, the smell of success. And you better believe we're gonna take them home and cook them, that is Steph's favorite fish. Hell, it's everybody's favorite fresh water, except for the walleye, let's not forget. The most golden, crispy king of all. Well, I do gotta say, it does feel good to get on some crappie, y'all. I really enjoy catching them. I hope you guys enjoy watching the crappie videos. Let me know in the comments. I know some people I met at the Bassmaster Classic were like, crappie fanatics. They were like, you gotta do more crappie videos. And I will say, as a personal quest, I just wanna learn more about them and learn how to catch them more. You know, right now is the spring. It's like the most obvious, easy time to catch them. So if you wanna get into it, right. Fish just jumped right there. Gonna go ahead and just catch one real quick, just hang on. Okay, dead gummit. That was the fishing freaking me kicking in, y'all understand. Six pound test, this is the six pound test, Guggen Squad fluorocarbon. Uh, it's great for crappie, overall pan fishing. And I'm using a, I think this is a six foot. It is, no, it's a five eight, I'm sorry. Uh, but a six foot medium light uh, is really good for this type fishing, throwing uh, small rooster tails, little crankbaits, um, you know, like this little road runner that I'm using here. And I believe this is an eighth ounce. It's an eighth ounce uh, road runner, and that's uh, just an LFT sickle tail baby shad on there. You know, Guggen baits, we don't make crappie plastics yet. I will say that uh, Lake Fork Trophy Lures, they make some really, really good uh, crappie fishing baits. And the easy thing to do, y'all, is to just get you a bucket of minnows and toss them out there. And I could probably catch a lot more in various areas out here doing that. But I really enjoy the challenge of trying to catch them on artificials. And it's really cool when you get some crossover, like fishing the jerk baits and crank baits. You just don't catch near as many. Most of the time, they're feeding on small minnows, very small shad or really small, like minnows, top minnows that you see swimming around. Key thing to take away from the day, hard bottoms, y'all. I don't care if you're bank fishing or you've got a boat. If you don't have a depth finder, stick a rod down in, in the water in the ground and try to feel a difference in the bottom. If you can find that little gravel feeling or just a harder bottom, that was the key out here. And that's the, I'm telling you, that's the key all over the place during the spawn for bass, crappie, and a bunch of other species. Um, it's easier for them to lay their eggs. They don't have a bunch of uh, silt 
and sand getting all in their eggs that they like that hard bottom. Y'all better hit the thumbs up for tasty big slabs, y'all. Subscribe so you don't miss a single video. More fishing coming at you soon. I'll see y'all on the next one. God bless you.